You can see just for my own sake, it gets no marks, this line, especially since you have a reference sheet. Um, but I should point out, I did this without a reference sheet and this is not that hard a formula to learn. I mean, this top part here just looks like general form of the equation of a straight line. And then this part down here is Pythagoras. It just looks like that's where it comes from, okay? So you can see I've written it down so that when I'm putting in all of the numbers, I don't screw it up. So I know what numbers I'm putting into where. So this is the result I came up with after I did all of my absolute value and what have you. Do I have some agreement? Yep, cool. Looks good. The next question down here is a couple of different ways to do it, but here's the way I approached it. I looked at line L and I said, I want a line that's perpendicular to line L. So unlike in the first case where I put the equation of the line in general form, this time I put the equation of the line in this form. What is this form? This is gradient intercept, slope intercept. And the reason why is because I'm after this guy right here. Okay, So I have pulled out that gradient and I use that to find the gradient of the line that's perpendicular to that. It's just the negative reciprocal, as you can see on the right hand side. Once you've got that, I launch straight into here. Michael, question? Uh, just with the answer, isn't it 5 plus 2, 5x plus 2y? Yep, it absolutely is. Because I haven't, that 2y hasn't gone anywhere. Perfect. So you can see as well, what's important is that I don't have to use many words, but the words are very descriptive and tell you exactly what the working means. Eric? Do you have to do that sort of first part? Because I kind of just put the gradient is um, minus one or two. Minus You're talking about this part here? Yeah. Yeah, sure. It's a good question. Um, in terms of things that you might want to skip over, I think that gets a pass on the condition that, number one, you can get that very quickly. And number two, you can get it accurately. Now just personally, my own brain, I don't trust it. I don't feel like I gain any time by actually ignoring this first step here. And there is a chance, I mean, you didn't get any kind of like value for this question. You didn't know how many marks it was worth. So that would give you more cues as to whether you needed to include that working or not. Um, personally, I always just include more working rather than less because I always think that's the safe option. And it also gives me a reason to come back if I'm checking and I'm like, was that the right number or not? Well, I have working that helps me understand whether it was right or wrong, okay? So uh, the short answer to your question is yes, but at your own risk, okay? All right, then you come down to here. Now, again, um, as with most questions, there's a few different ways that you could have set this out. Uh, it does say find, and again, I didn't put a, a mark on it, so had it been just one, there's a good chance you could have just given an answer and it would have worked. You can see the way I've set it out. I've taken advantage of this identity here, which is really the definition of cosine, right? The co, of course, stands for? Complement. It's the complement assigned. There's the complement right there. Okay. So having done that, I can say that cos 70 is sine 20, and then I can replace cos 70 with sine of x plus 5, because that's what exactly the question says. It's worth pointing out, as I've written down the bottom right hand side, that there are plenty of other solutions. For example, if 15 is a solution, then what's another solution? Uh, you could probably think about it. If, if I've got sine of 15 plus 5 degrees, Right? That gives me my 20, sine 20. But there's a lot of different things that are equal to sine 20. A lot of different angles that give you that. For instance, sine of 380 will give you the same value as sine 20. Why is that? Yeah, adding 360 works because sine is a periodic function. It's periodic every 360 degrees. So I could have come up with an infinite number of solutions apart from that, but this is just the smallest one. Okay, thumbs up. Yep. Let's go to the next column. Wait, so if you just uh, like said the answer, uh, I would, <coughs> I'm going to encourage you to put some working because like I said, I haven't told you the value of this. Um, I could totally have made that a two mark question and you would have needed some working there. Okay. Shh. Okay. So here's my next one. Um, can I get a show of hands? Who got this region? Hands up straight, a bit higher so I can really see. About half of you. Okay, thank you, hands down. Um, let me talk you through it. So you get given two inequalities. 
here's the first one, and here's the second one. And I want to know when both of those inequalities exist at the same time. So I draw them both, and then I want to look for the overlap. You can see I've got my circle there. Um, you'll also notice that even though the inequality that goes with the circle has the boundary included, you'll note that I've drawn it dotted anyway, for most of it anyway. Why did I do that? Do you remember back to why I did that? Okay, I need, I need both to be true at the same time. So I don't know anything. While I'm drawing that circle, I don't know anything about the straight line and what it's going to influence the whole inequality. So therefore, being that I don't know, I leave it dotted. It's always easy to go back over that and make it a, whole, a full line if I need to. But if I draw it a full line, it's, hard, it's a pain to rub out or white out or whatever. So I drew it dotted. I did the same thing to y equals x minus 2. And it is really important, by the way, that you include those labels there. Thunor, you got a question? So you're talking about uh, doing something like that? Yeah. Yep, absolutely. So this answer would be perfect. However, uh, in practice, had I had a pencil rather than you know, a screen, I would have shaded that inside of the circle. I would have shaded that bit underneath the line. And then there's no reason to get rid of it if it's clear, like I think this is, as to what's the actual region that I'm describing is my final answer. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you don't have to get rid of it is what I'm saying. Um, once I've got those two there, you can see here is the overlap, and then I fill in this boundary down here. You see this one's filled in? Why is that? It's where they intersect, but importantly, that, that borderline, that arc, we have words for this, right? That arc satisfies both inequalities. It satisfies this top one here, because right on the boundary, and the boundary is included, it also satisfies this one because that portion of the circle is beneath the straight line. Does that make sense? Um, you might also have worked out, by the way, why I said don't worry about these points of intersection. They do need to be labeled as hollow or filled. Hollowed or filled. But as a little exercise for us now, if I hadn't have told you to not worry about it, if I had just left it open, you would have had to have found those points. How do you do that? How do you find out where they are? I need the point of intersection. How do I find points of intersection? I solve simultaneously. Now maybe just, if you've got some space, you can draw it on your friends if you like, because you all have the same thing. Just watch what happens when I start to do this. I'm solving between, let's put it up here, x squared plus y squared equals nine, that's the circular boundary. And y equals x minus two, that's the straight line boundary. So when I solve this simultaneously, if you take equation two, and substitute it into equation one, you get this. Do you agree? I've just done a straight substitution. Wherever y was, I put in x minus two. When you have a look at this guy here, what are we gonna get? You're gonna have, what, minus two, uh, sorry, four x plus four, yes, equals nine over on the right hand side. And if you collect all your like terms nice and neatly, I think you end up with this. Do you agree? Do you see why I told you now not to worry about this? Because this is not the point of the question. Right? You're going to get some ugly thirds out of this, then you're going to have to put them back into this equation to find the y coordinate. This is not the point of the question. I just want to understand if you can work out how these inequalities relate to each other. Okay, let's keep going. Here's my use of the cosine rule. Now, did you have to draw a diagram? No. You probably, given the simplicity of the question, could have worked it out uh, and done all of this working on the right-hand side without the diagram there. But I don't see any reason why you wouldn't. Like, it took me all of five seconds to draw that, even with the stick figure, and I clearly know what I'm working out, and that's very helpful, okay? Significantly, shh, Paul. Significantly, in the cosine rule, the only thing that really matters is which of the sides is opposite the angle you're after? Because we treat that side differently, right? There he is, 8 squared, right? You subtract him and he doesn't make his way onto the denominator. Did you agree with the angle? Yep, thumbs up. Um, so we can move on from that, 45.2. I put it to one place because I didn't have any particular accuracy. Let's have a look at this guy. Now, yeah, plus or minus 120 degrees. Now, um, you may have had a quadrants diagram drawn here, which would have been fine. If you did this via quadrants, which quadrants would you determine the answer would be in? Okay, so you want to be over here, whoop, here, 
in here, quadrants two and three. However, we're so used to the quadrants being not to 90, 90 to 180, 180 to 270, and 270 to 360, because that's what most questions are from 0 to 360. But that's not what the domain is here. The domain is different. So in fact, rather than these two quadrants being these angles, what are the two quadrants corresponding to? Yeah, very good. Uh, I'd probably say from smaller to greater, I'd say negative 90 to 0. That's the, the closest one. And then negative 180 to negative 90. Okay. Now that's perfectly fine. You can see um, the angle I'm going to get in here is minus 120, and the angle I get up here is positive 120. Uh, but it's just as easy to argue that from the graph, and your calculator will, if you, you know, I can't remember your exact values, your calculator will simply hand back to you 120 degrees when you do this. And from the graph you can see the symmetry. Cosine is an even function. Do you remember even functions? They've got that symmetry there. So if 120 is an answer, then minus 120 is also an answer.